Welcome back to Pro Tips, everybody. This is part two of the technique slash tip I gave you last week on Instagram, which was for home buyers, and it was the high pressure technique. Now, a couple of disclosures for you up front. Number one, if it's an estate sale, this probably won't work because they legitimately have certain protocols they follow. Number two, this technique, this tip has worked for me. I've tried it five times this year. It worked for me four of those times. One time it didn't work at all. I got no luck, no love. Um, and number three, make sure you are working with a licensed real estate agent or realtor who knows your market because their input in this technique is absolutely vital. Oh, and uh, actually number four, make sure you follow the timestamps here. The times are really important when it comes to doing this particular tip. You have to follow them the right way. All right, let's jump right in. Now, assuming you have found the house you love, the house you want to put your offer on, and again, assuming you're in a market that is still very high pressure, very competitive, a lot of uh, bidding wars going on, a lot of competition happening. Uh, and if you're in a market, by the way, that's on a downturn, don't do this, you don't need to. But if you're in a competitive market, like where I work, five, six, seven offers are common on every property, selling for way over the listing price is common, contingency waivers are common. You can try this technique in those markets and you may have luck. So here's what you're gonna do. You wanna make sure that the day it comes live, the day you can go see it, you wanna get in right away, early as you can, as early as you can with your agent and make sure you do a thorough and complete tour. Now, the reason why is we're gonna take advantage of that first day drop and we're gonna put high pressure on the seller to make a decision very quickly. That day, you and your agent get together and have the agent help you draft a really competitive, aggressive offer. The kind of offer that's gonna make a seller stand up and go, wow. Now you wanna drop that offer to the listing agent at either four o'clock, five o'clock, or six o'clock. No earlier. And the reason why is listing agents are always looking for a way to get more time so they can shop your offer. They all deny it, we all deny it, but it's true, everybody shops their offers. They may not tell somebody what you specifically offered, but they'll give allusions to it. Now, the more time they have to shop your offer, the worse your offer starts to look. We don't wanna give them that. We wanna cut that time frame down to three hours. That's it, you've got three hours to respond. Now, the reason we do it at four or five or six is a lot of times what a listing agent will say is they can't get their agent, they can't get their client, sorry, on the phone until after work. My sellers don't get back until after four o'clock or after five o'clock or after six o'clock. Great, we're gonna wait until four o'clock to drop that offer then and we're gonna give you three hours to respond, whether it's four, five, or six, doesn't matter. Anything after six, by the way, starts to get a little bit late and a little bit tougher. Um, so get that offer in between four o'clock and six o'clock and give them three hours to respond and tell the listing agent, here's the deal. We're coming forward with a great offer up front. We're not wasting your time. We're hoping you're not gonna waste ours. We're gonna give you a fantastic offer right now. You can either take our offer, which is very fair, it's very good, it's very solid, it's clean, or you can take your chances with the open market. But in three hours, there is no more offer. It's off the table. We're done in three hours. We've located two properties we like. This is the first one, we need a decision. Now the listing agents do anything they can. They will do anything they can to stretch that time out. Don't give an inch because their response will tell you almost everything you need to know. They're gonna turn over their cards with how they respond to you. If their response is, I just can't get an answer for you in three hours. And no matter what your offer is, there's nothing I can do for you in the next three hours. I'm sorry. If that's their answer, then the chances are very, very good that he or she is either holding or has good reason to believe they will soon be holding a very aggressive offer. Number two, if they answer it this way, I'll do the best I can, but you're not giving me much time to work with. Three hours is not a lot of time. I'll try to get my sellers on the phone. I'll do what I can, but no promises. If they hem and haw a little bit and they stall, that's good. That means they don't have anything and they're not sure they're gonna get something better because if you're pushing that much, chances are pretty good. Your offer is gonna be really good. So they wanna try to buy as much time as they can to call every other person that was at the listing that day and anybody who's on the list for tomorrow and the day after. They wanna call everybody and say, hey, I've got this offer on the table. It's for, X amount of dollars, or it is above the listing price, or it's a clean offer, or there's no contingencies, whatever. They're not gonna, they can't give the information on the offer specifically, but agents can talk to agents and we all know what each other's saying. They wanna have as much time as they can to do that. We don't wanna give them that time. If they only have three hours, they barely have enough time to call the seller, explain the offer, 
and explain the contingencies if there are and explain the contract to the seller and then try to get on the phone with everybody who was either at the property or supposed to be at the property really soon. That's not a lot of time to then have those people turn around and offer together. So we're gonna really cut those time frames down. Now, no matter what, this is important. If the agent, the listing agent calls you and says, I got on the phone with the seller, but they're telling me they're not gonna answer until tomorrow morning. They just can't to commit to something tonight. They just need them, they need more time. You've gotta hold firm. That means that the seller likes your offer. Try to get as much time out so they can shop your offer. Now, this could be factual. Not everybody can make a decision in three hours. That's true. But when you're talking about selling a house, a lot of times the sellers have kind of have in their head what they want to get. And if you've given them a good, fair offer and a good competitive price, they may not want to take a chance at throwing that away and hoping that the marketplace brings them something better. That being said, it is also super important that you do not come to the table with an average offer, meaning that if houses are selling for 10% over the listing price in your community, don't go with an offer that's 5% below the list. That's not gonna do anything for you. You've got to be competitive. Don't just throw money away, but keep in mind your goal is to decrease the competition, not get rid of it completely, because this marketplace, you can't get rid of it completely. The best you can hope is to reduce the competition so you have a better chance of getting the best deal possible. I hope that gives you guys a little bit of information, a little bit more background on what it is you're looking to do and what you're looking to accomplish. Like I said, I've used this thing five times this year and it worked four of those times. One time they told me, no way. It happens. Good luck, everybody. It's a rough market. I wish you the best of luck. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me anytime. Again, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for the support. More stuff coming to you next week. See ya.